58 years from teaching to director of the Racial Equity Office for IPS schools, Dr. Patricia Payne has been the driving force for the inclusivity of black and brown students in equitable opportunities in education. She relentlessly pushed the district to adopt a new racial equity policy and train school leaders in racial equity, ensuring that teachers and students are conscious of systemic racism and how to correct it, never bothered by a little pushback. It is her commitment to go above and beyond to teach black history and promote black prosperity that makes her such a prominent voice and contribution to the IPS district. Shantae, is that it? Great. Yes, you can. Well, thank you more. so very, very much for your beautiful introduction. And good afternoon, Sharp Ridge students staff and all others who are gathered here for this distinguished, distinguished racial equity forum. I am so honored to return to my alma mater where I spent my high school years and graduated, uh-oh, don't you all turn your nose up, in 1957. That was a long time ago, a long, Devon, I see you saying, woo, that was a long time ago. Um, and some of you may have even seen my photo on the wall in the Hall of Fame. I'm in the Sharp Ridge Hall of Fame, so honored to be there also. Thank you, um, Mr. Thomas, for your leadership. Uh, your outstanding leadership, really, and to all the staff members and students who have had anything to do with your participation in this racial equity forum. Uh, I don't know one other school in IPS that's doing the kind of important work that you are doing at Sharp Ridge uh, to make racial equity and social justice a priority. I'm so proud of you. Give yourselves a big virtual hand. Yay. See, this is how you do a virtual hand. <laughs> so proud. Now, let's get started. I can't wait. Uh, let's start with you introducing yourselves and telling us something important about yourself that you do at Sharp Ridge. Demont, let's start with you. Um, hello. I'm Demont Stevens, a uh, senior at Shorch High School, and the main things that I'm involved in is I'm involved in a peer mentoring group, for ah. HBO, which is like it's the first year that our school's doing that, and I'm also one of the two presidents of our Shorch GSA. You're one of the two presidents of what? The Shorch GSA, dealing with LGBTQ+. Some of okay, I needed to know what DSA meant. Very good, okay, and a peer mentoring group. And you're one of two presidents. Is that what yes. you said? Okay. Yes. Very good. Diana, who I've met before, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> okay, so hello, I'm Diana Tenea. Um, I'm Mexican American and I'm Secretary of Membership at Short Ridge Now. Short Ridge Now, what does that stand for? Um, the National Organization for Women. The National what? Organization for Women. Okay. Oh, that's great. Very good. Anything else you want to share? Not really. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Shante, tell us something about yourself. Hi, my name is Shantae. I'm a senior. I'm a member of the Black Student Union and a student athlete at Shore Ridge High School. Oh, that's wonderful. I love hearing about all of these groups going on. Don't let me forget to tell you about the affinity groups that the district has started, too. Uh, Natalie, Natalie, hello. Tell us something about yourself. Hello. Um, my name is Natalie. I'm a sophomore at Shoreditch, and I am president of the NOW chapter at Shoreditch um, for the National Organization for Women. I love that. 
do you know I haven't heard the National Organization of Women for a very long time. So I'm so glad to know that's going on at Sharp Ridge. And now our illustrious leader of Sharp Ridge, Mr. Dennis Thomas, tell us something about yourself. Well, I'm Dennis Thomas, and as stated, I'm the, uh, the humble leader here at, at Short Ridge High School, and uh, recently appointed, started here in January, uh, but I've had uh, over 20 years experience in education uh, in, in the Indianapolis area, and five years also at um, in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And I guess the, the my, my job here at Short Ridge right now is the father of a sophomore, so I do have a sophomore ah. job, uh, my youngest uh little one, so I'll just embarrass her a little bit and say hello to her. <laughs> Very good. Is that all you're going to say, Mr. Thomas? Well, I thought I'd maybe talk a little bit more. And, and, and you know okay. what? This, I'll lean into this right now and say um, uh, it is it is just such a pleasure to be in, in the company of you, uh, Dr. Payne, but also of these, uh, these uh, yes. uh, youngsters that are leaning into this discomfort here. Um, it takes a lot to step up and, you know, to, to, to take on this kind of role in leadership that you've already have displayed, but also for uh, being a role model for your peers and, and having a, an opportunity to lead a forum like this and these great conversations. So kudos to you. I'm proud to serve um, to serve you and, and to work here at Short Ridge with, with those folks just like you. That's wonderful. Uh, I can't ever remember anything like this going on at Sharp Ridge when I was there in 1957. You talk about um, the groups that you are members of or leaders of, the National Organization of Women, the LGBT group, the Black Student Union. What other groups are do you have at Sharp Ridge like that? You have... Uh, 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 um, do you have anything for like uh, Latinx students, a caucus or anything? Who's going to tell me? Are there any other groups like the ones that you said you were members of? You know, that's that is an area that we could probably continue to grow on. Um, OK, about the groups that you said you were members of and that brought to mind the affinity groups that the district is uh, involved in. We, we, we haven't gotten it really started yet, but we're, we've sent out surveys to every single teacher and staff person in the district to, say, to see what kind of affinity groups. An affinity group is like a caucus or just like what you said you were members of. We have a white affinity group. It's called Confronting White Privilege. Uh, people are able to draw to join a black or African American affinity group, a Latinx. Uh, um, help me out, Mr. Thomas. You got that survey. Asian Pacific Islander also. So what you are modeling, we love because that's exactly what we want to see going on in every school. Let's talk about uh, social justice. What is social justice to you? What, what do you think it is? And I want this to come from your heart. So don't be going to your iPhones now looking it up. I want you to <laughs> tell. <laughs> I got mine right here too. What in your mind's eye is social justice? Who would like to start the conversation? Come on, you all speak up now. This is a conversation. What do you, what do, to you, what is social justice? Think about everything that's going on in the country right now. Just think about that. And even in our city right now. When you think of the things you've seen, you just heard the name last week, I believe it was Breonna Taylor. Before that, there was George Floyd. So when you think of social justice and racial equity, what does that bring to mind? 
Demont, I see you. You 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 look like you want to talk. So go ahead and tell us what's on your mind. Um, and I think of like social justice. I my my first I guess I didn't really think about it, but my first thought is that um, people fighting for equality, you know, but it doesn't matter what the race is. So you have white people who are fighting for justice with black people, um, vice versa. And that's kind of the first thing that I thought of is people from different races standing up for another one. Because mm-hmm. when you look at um, the protests going on on TV, I've never seen anything like it. I see more than ever. And you know, in my lifetime, I've seen a lot of protests. I was around when there were the civil rights protests were going on. And mm-hmm. that was mostly uh, black people. Some white people, but mostly black. But now when I look at the protests, it looks like it's mostly young people. And it's people from diverse races that Mm -hmm. are there saying the same thing. And I think that that just does my heart so good. That is true, what I call social justice and racial equity. Who would like to add to what DeMott said? in terms of what you think social justice and racial equity is. Okay, if y'all don't talk, I'm gonna call on you. Shantae's got- Um, I wanna add to that. Um, Okay, good, Shantae. To me? Yes. To me, social justice is feeling security and fairness within your own skin without like feeling like you're going to be discriminated against or oppressed because of the color of your skin. Racial equity is just like, feeling like the opportunity that you have is is affordable, it's affordable to all students, to everyone, no matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, no matter who you are, it's just feeling that you have a chance to do what you wanna do and that you won't have that chance because of your skin color. Oh, I love everything you said, absolutely. The freedom to be who you are with mm-hmm. no barriers put up because of the color of your skin. That's what I heard you say, Shantae. Beautiful. And uh, Mr. Thomas, you were getting ready to say something. Well, Natalie has got her hand up right now. So let's let oh, her I didn't answer. See that. I didn't see your hand, Natalie. Go it's ahead. A, um, when I think of social justice, I think about... Um, Uh, the opportunity that people have, um, whether that's because of the color of their skin or their ability or what gender they identify as, I think of social justice as making sure that people from all backgrounds have um, equal opportunity to achieve things in their life and be successful. Absolutely. I see your hand, Diana, go ahead. Uh, I think of social justice as a constant fact for all the people being equal. Uh, it doesn't matter their color of their skin, their background, their ethnicity, um, or the gender, their, aden- their identity. Sorry, I'm still learning which is hard to say so word. <laughs> um, <laughs> racial equity. Um, I don't know how to express that really, but... Um, using my thoughts, everyone should be equal, and we should not still be facing all the social in- injustice that we're still having on, all the deaths, all the police brutality, all the white privilege. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. Okay. Thomas, go yeah. ahead. Well, so uh, three of you, maybe four of you said the, the word opportunity, um, and that's a pretty powerful word and i would add to that too is, is another one is um is a, a feeling of safety you know you said comfort or a feeling like you can be who you are but you need to have a place that's safe if it's an environment or if it's your city if it's your home um or a, a, a place of business you need to be able to, to know that that opportunity is there and that you should be able to to, to strive for it so that's uh those are two 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 things to me that i think that are society uh, needs to really focus in on. And I, I find, Dr. Payne, I find it interesting that you lived through the civil rights movement yes. 
and you mm-hmm. see the differences between these these two, and you and you're the one who, who says this is it's not a moment, right? You, you, it's you, a movement. It's a movement. It's been going on for most of your life, right? I mean, that's been what that's exactly been, right. Even that is like, what is that? You highlighted a little bit of it, but what is those those differences that you do see? You know, from the the 1960s and right now, you said more diverse folks, but what other things do you see that makes it a difference that you're so excited about? I'm going to talk about first what, what I don't see, what 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 keeps <laughs> hurting me, paining me, um, is the fact that this is still going on since I was at Charlotte, since I was a young child. What is it? Why is it? that we can't, hmm, why is it that skin color seems to be a barrier to what is happening? And and I want you all to understand that this started a long, very, very, this inequality started a very, very, very long time ago. In fact, it started when back in 1619, when we were first enslaved and brought to this country, the laws, the policies that were put in place against people of color, uh, even though those same laws and policies are no longer on the books, the residue from those laws and policies still remain. And plus, they've come up with new laws and policies because there was a time in our history when white folks and people of color got along just fine. But then there were others who said, "Uh uh-uh, this is interfering with uh, how we think things should go and how the money that's supposed to go in our pocket, if these folks get along, then it's going to keep us from working this group while this group gets privileged. I mean, it's that's what we learn in our racial equity training. And that's why I'm so proud to be in this district because everybody, every staff person in this district goes through this two-day racial equity training. And that's where we learn how long ago this started. And that's why it's so important that we have students like you who are working on this and working toward the day when we won't have to have protests, when we won't have to see things like a a shoe, a a foot on someone's neck, see? Mm -hmm. Uh, That day will come. It won't come in my lifetime, but hopefully it will come in your lifetime. And uh, Ms. Patrick, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything to add to our conversation? (laughs) Um, I would just add that, you know, I agree with everything that everyone has said. And then one thing I just would like to see more of, of course, we have in this, uh, you know, student body panel just to see our young people be nurtured in a way in which they are, they embrace one another, their culture, their, um, their, and have respect for each other's culture, their way of life, their religion, um, whatever it may be. A lot of this does start at home, but you know, sometimes it takes the young ones to teach the old heads, you know? So <laughs> if our young people can gain this type of knowledge within our, this, the school, maybe they can take it home to their parents, or at least we know they are develop into an adult that has compassion and empathy and respect for various cultures. And I see that, you know, that's what I would like to see going forth. This nurturing, this planting this seed in these young people that is going to blossom into another generation yes. where we won't ever see anything like what we saw with George Floyd. But of course, this will take generations probably. But, you know, some people thought they would never see a black president in their lifestyle time. Yes, I was sure. never one of those people. I, I knew one day I would see that. So I think, yes. you know, we will, we it's possible that we will see that in our lifetime. We just keep planting these seeds of, yes. of, of, of nurturing these seeds of uh, diversity, love, respect. I always talk about with my family and my, my children, you know, the, the fruit of the spirit. The love, joy, peace, and patience 
kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If you live by these attributes, this will spill over into your family and into the way you carry yourself in life. Very, very good. Now, students, how do you think these struggles for social and racial justice apply here at Sharp Ridge? How can we make sure that every student who is at Sharp Ridge feels secure, feels safe in their own skin? What is going? I've heard you say some things already. What is going on in your environment or what can go on in the environment of Sharp Ridge where Everybody can feel wanted. Everybody can feel that there is there are no barriers to stop them. Anyone? What do you think, Demont? Um, one thing that I usually do is I'm very diverse with everybody that I talk to, or since that I talk to multiple people, like different people. Of, of different grades, different classes from me, and yeah. usually whenever I do that, I'm kind of treating everybody the exact same way. You know, I don't look at race that much. I don't look at your backstory. I don't look at what you are. It's the fact that I'm going to treat you. I would treat you as if you're my best friend. Kind of like one thing that that we should do is everybody just treat everybody with kindness. You know, ignore race. To be honest. Right, because the thing that that does, it really helps you because you will be able to hear perspectives from another person that may be different from yours. And all you do is add that learning on to what you were already thinking, see? So I think that is always a plus. Anyone else? Uh, uh, Natalie, what do you think about that? Um, I think that, um a big part of it is just mentioning things um, in in class, like um, especially maybe in ATL or in, in your classes. Like I think um, um, it's a good idea to always um, be mindful of the things that are going on in our in our world, and just like a simple thing that happened in one of my classes was that we had a do now at the beginning of the class and we had a discussion about violence and how it made us feel. And that was um, right after some of the news um, about Rihanna Taylor came out. Um, and I just, I think that talking about it and advocacy, especially um, for kids that are learning and growing and developing into hopefully people that are, able to be compassionate for others, um, that it's always really good to think about um, your fellow classmates and fellow students. And um, especially for me, um, I'm white and I have white privilege, and so I can't speak for people of color and how that makes them feel, but I know that um, when teachers make the effort to acknowledge things that happen like that, um, that it reminds me and it helps me um, and I think maybe other students to think about those things and thinking about caring for their students and thinking about how that applies to them in their life. Mm. We need to take you all over this country <laughs> so you mm -hmm. can share what you just said. You, you mentioned, Natalie, that you have white privilege. What does that mean? Um, I think it means that because I am white, um, because I'm white, I don't face any discrimination against my skin color. I don't have any um, disadvantages because I'm white. Um, I don't suffer anything due to my race. Um, and, and on top of that, I'm um, middle class. I have both parents that have master's degrees. Um, I come from a very privileged family. And I think it's really important to make sure that um, people like me um, acknowledge that and um, use that to change the things um, in their life um, that might help their, their fellow classmate, fellow man. Mm. You tell your parents, I wish I could meet them. I give them an A plus and I haven't even met them yet. 
That was brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. I loved it. Uh, let me see. Diana, did you have anything you wanted to add to the conversation yet? Um, yeah, so just the part of the, the stuff I'm working pretty well. Um, an example, we have a choir teacher. She has been acknowledged a lot, all the racial injustice that having going on. And I think another thing that they need to acknowledge is the language barriers that a lot of students probably have. Yes. Um, myself have, <laughs> have ones. So it's it's very hard when you really don't know the language and you're forced to get into a system that doesn't recognize other languages as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. We talk about a lot about skin color as a barrier, but there are other barriers that students face. And you mm -hmm. just named one, a language, language barriers, you see. And that can, anything that makes you different from what is considered the norm or what is considered average can be a barrier. So that's and so when we talk about social justice and we aren't we say racial equity equity, but we're really talking about equity, period. So we can't always just look at skin color. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Uh, Shantae, are you still with us? Yes. Okay, do you have anything you'd like to add to this when we talk about barriers and so that and how we are feeling? You have anything you want to add? Um, yes, I want to go off a comment that Demont made about when, when he's with people, how he just sees them as friends and he ignores race. That's a problem. I feel like a mistake that a lot of people make with ignoring race. I feel like a lot of times we think of that as a good thing. But it's actually that's another barrier, because if you ignore my race, you don't know who I am. So I feel like we, we shouldn't ignore race, but instead acknowledge it. Know what person you are dealing with so that you know how to help them so that they can find comfortability in you. And that's what I feel like at Shortridge, a lot of our teachers have. And that's what a lot of teachers should have. I should be able to be comfortable with my teachers because they know me, because they do see my race, but they don't see it as a barrier. Amen and amen to that. What you were just talking about is what we call the colorblind theory. When people say, I don't see race. I treat everybody the same. We don't believe that you treat everybody the same. We don't believe that at all. So you are so right about that, Shante. Right on the point. If you don't see who I am, if you don't see my race, then how can you see me? How can you teach me if you don't see who I am? Excellent point. Anyone else want to add anything to that? You know, I have I have one thing to, to add, and that's what um, Shanti just said. Is she said acknowledge it? You know, the authenticity, being who you are, and also. Know, being honest um, about it and, and you know Natalie brought that up too you know what is white privilege to you and, and being yes. you know, like, that and acknowledging it but you know there's something I was I wanted to follow up with Diana's uh, comment on that is um, you know the language barrier that's there and, and and you know that we need to work on that I think even more at Short Ridge because that's been something that um, has been brought up to my attention over the last month too but are there other things at Short Ridge that we could do better to, to meet the needs of our students and look at how we can be change agents in our society? Students, respond to your principal. He's asking for this. Any response? Demont? Can you say the question again, Mr. Thomas? You, you highlighted a lot of great things at our school, and I and I agree with you. I think we're doing some a lot of really good things, and um, and I, you know, Shate even talked about our um, feeling that our our teachers acknowledge us, you know, who we are, and 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 welcome us um, in, in, into the door into the classroom. But what are some of the things that we could get, you know, we could do a little bit better that uh, 
um, you know, we, we've already identified two things. We need to have a Latinx affinity group and we need mm -hmm. to focus in on some language, right, um, uh, support. So are there other things too that we might need to do or, or improve on? Um, I, a long time ago, a friend of mine talked about how they think like, you know, how a lot of African Americans have certain clothing that they like to wear, like do-rags, for example. They, um, she, she argues that like, like do-rags should be allowed for because like it's, you know, it's a symbol of black culture and it's something we've had before. So I think like that could be something, just think on top of my head. Is that not allowed now? Um, it's if you, kind of, you can, have if you have like a, it's kind of an on and off. Maybe it's some teachers. Okay. Kind of, because at the beginning of at least sophomore year, we we were told that like um you like we had to have a certain dress code. So I think like um leggings were revealed, do rags couldn't be worn, and you could only wear hats depending on a religious matter. Okay. Okay. And, and, and that's the transitional, transitional piece a little bit there, too. I think uh, the mindset has been off and on. So, um, yeah. and it's, um, you know, there's a, it's an ongoing conversation. So I'd love to hear yes. a little bit more about this from the other, other folks, but there's a, a really good YouTube video, the history of the hoodie. Um, and it's an interesting uh, uh, historical, it goes back to, to Egypt and about uh, covers and, and, and hats and, 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 and the things that, that conflicts arise from. But, I'd um, love to hear more about that from other students too. What do you think? Good. Okay. See, that's a conversation that you can have then. I mean, like, I don't have on my usual wrap. Usually, usually I have my whole head wrapped in an African uh, uh, wrap. So, to some teachers, that may make some teachers feel uncomfortable, you see. So, but if you don't have conversations about it, you'll never know. You'll never know. Let me see. Um, a lot of this national discourse that we're hearing is dealing with just black and white, but this is one of the questions from uh, students in student government. It says, but people have intersecting identities. How do these intersexual identities impact the community at Sharp Ridge? And what can Shartridge do to be more welcoming and inclusive? Do I need to read that over? That was a long one. I'll, in Our other words, say, say that again. Yeah, could you explain the question? I'm kind of not understanding it. Okay. So. Okay. A lot of times, all we hear about is this black and white things happening between black and white. But this question is saying people have intersecting identities like I'm a woman, I, uh, I, I, I'm a black woman. I could be, I'm not. I could have a disability. Uh, there are some who are LGBTQ. So there's all these different identities, but usually the conversation is just about between black and white. So how do these, all of these intersectional identities, we call it, impact the community at Sharp Ridge? And what can Sharp Ridge do to be welcoming and inclusive? Anyone want to take that one on? Shante, you have your hand up. You want to answer that? Um, yes. I can't see Shante. Shante, oh, I see your little hand there. Okay. <laughs> the Go camera, ahead. Shante. It just it stopped working, so I don't know oh, about okay. that. Okay. Okay. Um, so the um the term is intersectionality, and it's like just understanding that a person can be doubly like you can be double oppressed. You can be oppressed because you're a woman and because you're black or because of multiple things. There are multiple things that shape your identity and multiple privileges or disadvantages that you can have because of who you are. And I feel like, for instance, and, and from my perspective, I am black and I am woman. That would look different for from a white woman 
as far as if we address feminism. She will address feminism as a white woman, as facing the barrier of being a woman. When I address feminism, I have to face the barriers that I am a woman, but I am also a black woman. So I am beneath men, but I am also beneath the other white woman because I am black. And that's mm-hmm. what intersectionality is. It's about understanding that we are different because of those extra barriers or extra privileges. Exactly. Shante, you got it. God, I'm, I'm telling you right now, when we have, we're going to have an equity summit in March. That's during spring break for uh all staff people, and I'm telling you now, I'm inviting you right now to be a part of that discussion uh, for our, our IPS Equity Summit. So put down the date of March the 24th because I want all of you there. I'm not sure yet. It'll probably be in a workshop session, or I may have you doing a keynote address but you will be uh, recognized at that equity summit because you are doing the work. What Shante just said, what I've heard all of you students say is so important. And we not only need other students to hear your voice, we need teachers. We need people that are working with students to hear your voices and your perspectives on this. It is just so important. Does anyone else have anything they want to add to what uh, Shantae just said? Natalie, do you still have a, you have your hand up? Okay, go ahead. You know what? I got to start looking at these little hands over here. Okay, go ahead, Natalie. Um, So intersectional feminism has been a big thing um, recently, and especially in the National Organization for NAP. For, sorry, National Organization for Women, um, historically there's been a lot of um, white middle class women that only represent um, feminism, that um, represent the face of feminism. And so to be um, intersectional, um, like Shantae was saying, you have um, extra barriers because you um, identify with multiple groups that are discriminated against. And um, so for my club, at least, for, for the National Organization for Women chapter at Shoreage, um, a big goal of ours this year is to make sure that we have diversity in our club and um, that we are addressing all people that identify as women, like um, women that are Black, that are um, of color, women that um, have different abilities, um, women that are straight, women that are gay, um, all women, because um, when we can't um, address the whole picture, the whole um, group of people, um, we can't really um, achieve um, like true social justice, right? Mm -hmm. And so we may never achieve true social justice, but we have um, intersectionality is addressing um, the whole person and their whole identity and how their identity um, gives them disadvantages because of the society we live in. Woo! Mr. Thomas, you got some students. I'm telling you, I'm just, ooh, I'm just awed by what I hear coming out of the mouths. They, they call it the mouths of babes, but you are babes. You are students, and I'm just so proud to hear your perspectives here today. Natalie, When I say to you that if racism is going to stop, that it has to be the job. Let me, I'm going to pull one of my books here. This is, uh, this book is called Einstein on race. You heard of Albert Einstein, right? Okay. Einstein on race and racism. And he says that if racism is going to stop, it is the job of white people. It has to be done by white people. How? What are your feelings about that? 
Well, um, white people hold all the power. White people are the ones who benefit from um, uh, oppression of people of color. Um, so to recognize that you are benefiting from a system that puts other people's down, other people down, and to consciously make an effort to make sure that they have um, the opportunities that you do, um, that's the role that I have um, as a white person. That's the role that um, a lot of my students and teachers have as white people um, is to use their their power, their right white privilege um, that's been going around a lot to use your white privilege to further the movement and to um, just look out for others who don't have your opportunities. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Mm. I can't wait till the Equity Summit to show you all off. It's, it's just amazing. Let me see. Let me look at another question. Do any of you have a question that you would like to ask the panel? Now, I've got several questions here, but do any of you have a question? Because what we are trying to do and what the district is trying to do, we have a racial equity policy. We have an amazing Black Lives Matter policy. You have a policy, but none of that matters if we can't lift the words off the page and put them into action. And that's what I see happening here at Chartridge. And that's what we're trying to do in the district by making sure everybody goes through this uh, racial equity training by making sure that everybody, after they leave that training, they are able to hold that work together within their buildings. Because it doesn't matter if you go, two days of training, I don't care how powerful it is. After two or three days, you start forgetting everything you heard because all of this racism is still coming at you from the media, from all from the music that you hear, from all kinds. And so that's why it's so important for you as young people to keep this going, to keep these conversations going, not only in your school, but in your community, in your home, in your churches. You've got to keep these going. And when I think of um, social justice, my hope is, and I can see it coming from you, that when you see something that you know is wrong, that it doesn't take an adult to say, okay, now we got to do something about that. You as students will know something is wrong. There is something out of kilter. Somebody is not being treated right. Somebody is, is being discriminated against. And you will take action to make sure that that person doesn't have to go through whatever he or she may be going through. That you don't have to wait for us to say something. That you gather other people, other your friends of like mind and do something about the problem. Okay. Now, let me see. How can we help prepare? This is an interesting question. How can we help prepare socially just teachers? Huh. How can we help prepare socially just teachers? All right, students. Now. Oh, I see I see Shante's hand up. Shante, what you got to say about this? Um, I feel like to prepare socially just teachers, first we need them to know and understand what racism is. And this doesn't matter if you're a white teacher, a black teacher, no matter any teacher, you need to know what racism is. And that means understanding that racism is not just biased or prejudiced. 
racism is systemic. So we need to understand that it is embedded in everything. It is embedded in our school systems. It's embedded in everything that America is. So we need them to understand that so that they know, okay, what can I do to make sure I'm not adding to another student's barrier? Just, and not even because I want to, but just because I don't understand what I'm doing. I don't understand that what I'm doing is racist. I don't even know that I'm taking the opportunity from somebody because I don't even know what racism is. I feel like a lot of times everyone's definition of racism is incomplete. Yes, 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 yes. Where'd you get all your knowledge about this from, Shantae? About systemic racism. I can't get teachers to understand what systemic racism is and how it impacts everything we do, everything we do. Right now, in our uh, training, we have members, we don't have members of the IPS uh, family. We have members uh, from the community because this systemic racism, as Shante just so eloquently said, it runs through everything. I call it the equal opportunity employer, everything. It, and, it, and what the other thing it does is it shapes the outcomes of everything. So it runs through health, it runs through housing, it runs through finance, any and everything is touched by racism. That is why right now with this COVID-19, it is illuminating um, the, dis the disproportionality and disparities that have always been there because it is affecting black and brown people more than any other groups. Those are the people because of the health disparities that have always been there. So if you've already got um, something wrong with you, which many of us do as black and brown people, when you, COVID-19, you're ripe for COVID-19. So that's what systemic racism does to you. It's a poison that runs through everything. And that's why the only way that this systemic racism is gonna be stopped is through knowledge, through people, through young people like you who go into um, oh, what, job opportunities, health opportunities that can work on these things, see? That's why it's so refreshing to hear your viewpoints on this. Anyone else? Uh, Lisa, I see your hand up. You're on mute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? All right. Um, just to piggyback on what Shantae was saying so beautifully. To, uh, and the question was, is how to prepare teachers? Yes. And, okay. And, and I just wanted to add, I think part of it, too, is that teachers, especially teachers, you know, just graduating from college, I really believe it needs to be part of their curriculum while they're in college. Yeah. It needs to be part of their curriculum, and it could be part of our curriculum in the high school. In high school, that this would be um, a, 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 a class. It can be a class. It could be the way that we use advisory. It could be. It can be an affinity group that people go to two or three times a week, um, just learning culture, and um, it, it, it it can be something that we use as part of our. Um, Continual education. If we want to get points, uh, teachers want to do that, uh, and and staff period, staff period, because we all need to be you know, culturally aware. We all need to be culturally aware. So I think, you know, young people going into uh, the teaching profession need to make it their business to um, to take courses that are embedded with a cultural relevancy. And it can be a part of our, our, our curriculum as uh, as high schoolers. High schoolers right. can be a part of their curriculum as well. So, you so know what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so Patrick, here's, here's the irony of it. I took a class almost 25 years ago. And you know who my professor was? Who? Oh, God. Who? 
Dr. Payne was right here. That was Dr. Brown at the time, but she was my professor for my multicultural education at the time is what it was called. And, and I took a tour of the fledging, just getting ready to open Christmas Attic's museum. Wow. Um, my class. So, so this was uh, just a few years ago. I shouldn't have said 25, but it's been a day. <laughs> so, um, and, 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 and I also want to, I also want to, as, as a, as a, as a leader of, of educators, I, I do want to highlight this, that, that um, it, it is so much that goes into that question. It is not an easy answer. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you have things you have control over and there's things you don't have control over. But things that we do have control over, we need to really double down on those. For example, this summer, um, you know, when I, I used the word earlier, I think before we started recording, to equip and to empower are the two, the two words that I, I use. Uh, for students to be change agents. Well, we need to do the same um, uh -huh. and model that for our teachers. And this uh -huh. summer, in all of this crisis that's going down, and there was so much hurt, and there was so much anxiety that our that our faculty came together. And this wasn't this wasn't a principal call. This wasn't anything more than our faculty coming together. And actually, Mr. Tikolsky was one of the leaders of this um, to to take on what Shortridge what Shortridge was going to say. What uh -huh. we do. Yes, and, and we came together for what our Black Lives Matter pledge was and put it down in writing mm -hmm. and shared it and we published it. And what you're seeing right now in our World Changing 101 is about that and that putting that our our words into action. Mm -hmm. we have dedication to social justice. We've had opportunities about voting, about how, how do you pivot in a crisis to support your community. You know, those yeah. are things that we model. But then, you know, we need to keep track of each other and we need to hold each other accountable when we mess right. Because, you know, as Natalie says, you know, I'm a six foot two white male. Um, when I walk into a room, I have privilege that, that I, you know, that I've got to be aware of. And, and, and I need to be called out if, you know, if I make a mistake. Because we're going to, right? We need to. And that other word I used, and uh, which was safety and security. Uh, mm -hmm. our, and staff need to know that that is a place where we promote that and we promote that for our students and for each other and we raise that up as an important piece of what who we are is our mental health and as yeah. our our physical health and definitely about our cultural health and wellness mm -hmm. so things all have to be highlighted but but Ms. Patrick you were absolutely right it needs to be ongoing and continual and aspirational because you know it's gonna it's it's not gonna happen immediately because when i turn on television do i go home tonight yeah it's all over the place telling telling us the bad stuff right so we got to fight that we have to fight the good fight and that's what that one is right there so thank you dr payne for starting off my career uh in education <laughs> thank you for being a good student <laughs> listen of course this conversation could go on forever and ever but what you were talking about lisa what Everything should be looked at, I mean everything, through a racial equity lens. And it should be embedded in every subject that is taught, every subject. We have a superintendent, Superintendent Alicia Johnson, who is, she, has, she came here with a racial equity mindset. And she is, pushing this she is modeling this so this is all right in every corner of our um, district and uh, it looks like Sharp Ridge High School is going to be the modeling school for this because I can't wait to get out of here and tell everybody about what Sharp Ridge is doing so I want to thank you all for this opportunity to come back to my alma mater, even though it's virtual, you have touched my heart deeply. And I look forward to you being a, uh, a great part of our Equity Summer Summit in the spring. And I'm gonna keep in close contact with you. And uh, I'm going to be recommending that other schools Look at Sharp Ridge for uh, examples of what they should be doing in their schools. So thank you so much, so much 
for you and what you're doing. Thank you for your leadership, uh, Mr. Thomas. Thank you so much. I knew that when I was on that team to decide who would be the principal of Sharp Ridge, that I made the right choice, Mr. Dennis Thomas, for sure. Thank you all, and we're going to close out now. You've all got my uh, information. I hope you do. I'm very easy to find, and I want to keep in close contact with you all. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, and keep the fight going, okay? Bye-bye.